The final major college football game of the calendar year of 1978 was a spectacular and entertaining happening. As the new year of 1979 waited in the wings, Stanford and Georgia hooked it up for a wild, high-scoring thriller and the 20th annual Blue Bonnet Bowl football game played in the famed Astrodome in Houston, Texas. The city of Houston itself is quite a story and an attraction to these two fine universities playing in this game for the first time. The teams and their fans had a chance to visit the nation's fifth largest city, a dynamic city of business and industry and a terrific sports city with two Southwest Conference schools in Rice University and the University of Houston. 1978 President Ray Driver heads the big group of civic-minded business leaders who donate their time and talents without charge to boost Houston by staging this annual game. A dozen years ago, the game moved from Rice Stadium to the famed Indoor Astrodome, and its most successful ventures have been New Year's Eve events but let's meet the teams as they arrive for the big week here. First, the University of Georgia Club lands at Houston Intercontinental Airport and the Bulldogs and their entourage deplane. They will represent the powerful Southeastern Conference and coach Vince Dooley's club came very close to winning the SEC title. Let's see the Stanford team checking in on Thursday at their Marriott Hotel headquarters after arriving up in the evening on a flight from their home base of Palo Alto, California. The Cardinals, of course, represent the fine Pacific 10 Conference and come in from the famous San Francisco area. The Georgia team and officials settled in at their Shamrock Hilton Hotel headquarters and began workouts in the dome for the big game. But first, they enjoyed a fine banquet on Friday preceding the Sunday night game, along with the Stanford group at La Hacienda de los Morales. There was a great meal enjoyed by the players of both teams as evidenced here. featured short remarks and introductions of some key people, such as President and Mrs. Ray Driver, Selection Chairman and Mrs. Weldon Umble, Executive Vice President Vincent Buckley, this man, Elvin Smith, started it all 20 years ago in 1959 when he initiated the move to establish a bowl game in Houston and the presentation of watches to all the players with the team captains accepting on behalf of all the players. Handsome portraits were a special gift to the rival head coaches, Vince Dooley and Mrs. Dooley of Georgia and Coach Bill Walsh and Mrs. Walsh of Stanford. The mayor of the city of Houston, Jim McCann, a very enthusiastic football and sports fan was on hand to greet the teams to his city. Each team had a separate pre-game party in addition to both attending the awards banquet. We joined the Stanford group at their fun event when the Coca-Cola Company hosted the Cardinal players and staff at a big Western-style gathering at the Regal Ranch at Stafford, Texas, on the outskirts of Houston. The Georgia delegation also was entertained by Coca-Cola at a similar fun party the next evening. The players enjoyed some Texas barbecue and music by a country and western band that included the inevitable steel guitar. But after the pregame fun and preparation, soon it was time to get down to the game itself on New Year's Eve in the fabulous Astrodome in Houston.
Stanford won the toss and chose to receive. And despite a bit grim weather outside, it was 72 degrees with no wind inside the Astrodome. Rex Robinson was the kickoff man for Georgia to get the 20th Blue Bonnet Bowl game underway. And he rocketed the ball to the end zone where Gordon Banks found it for a touchback. Number 12, the nation's leading passer in Steve Dills of Stanford, came out throwing on the first play of the game. It was overthrown and almost intercepted, but that didn't phase Dills. He came right back and hit Darren Nelson on the next play for a nine-yard completion with Chris Welton on the stop for Georgia. Dills throws his third straight pass. Under a blitz by Georgia, he gets it out to number 37, Phil Francis, for 11 yards and a first down to the Sanford 40. But Georgia rises to the occasion, and on the next play, we see Gordon Terry make a big sack of Dills for a loss of 11 yards. Stanford has to punt, and Ken Neighbor from Cincinnati, Ohio, gets his toe into it for a fine 48-yard kick inside the Georgia 10, where safety man Scott Werner gets it back nine yards to the Bulldogs 17. Number seven, Jeff Pyburn quarterbacks the Bulldogs, and on his first play, gives it off to his running star, number 36, Willie McClendon, who runs 17 yards for a first down at the Georgia 34 before Rick Parker finally stopped it. Pyburn drops back for the first Georgia pass, but under a rush, is forced to run for an eight-yard gain before Evans and John Pickett make the stop. McClendon comes back for another fine run. We see the Brunswick, Georgia product race for 10 yards on this play just past midfield. But then McClendon fumbles on a handoff, and the alert Steve Buttinger of Stanford recovers for the first turnover of the game. On Stanford's first play with the ball again, flags fly on the snap as the nifty Nelson dashes for 20 yards behind the blocking of Jim Stevens and Gene Engle. Georgia was offside, and Stanford declined the penalty. Georgia kills this drive soon with this big play as Dills is sacked again, this time by end Rob Goodwin, number 99, for a seven-yard loss that forces Stanford to punt. We pick up Georgia with the ball again, and naturally with McClendon carrying it on a nine-yard gain out to his 33-yard line. Georgia continues to roll as Pyburn gets a slip screen pass out to Lindsey Scott, who breaks a tackle and scrambles for 17 yards to the Stanford 36. Another big gainer coming up here when split in Anthony Arnold, a hometown product of Athens, ran this end around play for a big 25 yard dash all the way to the Stanford 11 yard line. But the Cardinal defense gets tough now, led by Gordy Saracino with this stop of McClendon for a four yard loss. This play forced Georgia to settle for a field goal attempt. And here it is, Rex Robinson kicks from the right hash mark it's good, and Georgia takes a 3-0 lead at 3.07 to go in the first quarter. Stanford came back after the kickoff and got a counter drive underway with this 17-yard sprint up the middle on a delay play by Phil Francis, with Werner making the tackle for the Bulldogs at the Cardinal 39-yard line. On the next play, Steve Dills moves his Cardinals all the way from his own 39 to the Georgia 39 with this fine pass play over the middle to Mitch Place, good for 22 yards. Neighbor has to punt for Stanford from the 43, and the specialty team for the Cardinals shines here as Larry Harris and Rob McGregor kill the ball at the Georgia one-yard line to put Dooley's men in a deep hole. Then just before the first quarter ends, another break for Stanford comes on a diving interception of this deep pass by Pyburn, intended for Scott, but picked off by Larry Reynolds of Carvallis, Oregon at the Stanford 43. Georgia holds and Stanford has to punt. Number eight, Buck Ballou of Valdosta now quarterbacks the Bulldogs, and on his first play, he gives to McClendon who rips off 21 yards on this play. Next, we see Ballou take the air on this pass completion to Mark Hodge for 19 yards and a first down at the Stanford 27. The Wonder Dogs, as their coach Dooley himself named them, are on the move. But now we see how Gordy Saracino of Stanford will win the top defensive player award with plays like this stop of Ballou for a loss of three on an option. It stops the drive. It forces Georgia to go for a field goal. Robinson tries it from 38 yards out, but this time the kick is wide, and Georgia still leads only 3-0 on Robinson's earlier successful kick. Now Stanford starts a counter-march move with Darren Nelson on a delay up the middle, darting 18 yards to the 38 on this play. 
with Bob Kelly of Savannah on the stop. The Wonder Dog defense kills this drive when Dills is sacked again by another Savannah lad, Lewis Friedman, for an 11-yard loss. And Stanford has to punt the ball back to Jordan. With Ballou continuing at quarterback, the Wonder Dogs start their first touchdown drive with this nine-yard scamper by Jimmy Womack to the Stanford 46 before Saraceno gets him down. Now the first touchdown of the game. Ballou passes to Carmen Prince of St. Cloud, Florida, who goes 22 yards untouched into the end zone. Georgia leads 9 to nothing with a try for point no good at 4.06 to go until halftime. Stanford tries to rally on this swing pass by Dills to Phil Francis, who gets a fine block from Mitch Price to pick up 12 yards. But the drive bogs down, and Stanford has to punt. Let's go with a Georgia try to beat the clock to score before the half, including this gain of 10 to the Georgia 37 by Anthony Arnold on a pitch out. Jeff Pyburn is back now as man under. And the Athens Jr. hits a slip screen toss to Scott for a 12-yard gain, just short of midfield, with Tom Hall on the tackle for the Cardinals. Now a big play by Georgia after conferring with Coach Dooley on a timeout. It's a pitch out to freshman Matt Simon, who suddenly stops and throws a deep halfback pass to Arnold, good for a big 43 yards, and first down at the Stanford eight-yard line. Here comes the score as Pyburn rolls to his right, passes to Carmen Prince, who simply runs over a defender at the two-yard line and blasts in for an eight-yard touchdown play to put Georgia up 15 to nothing. The kick by Robinson is wide right, but so far it's all Georgia with this touchdown at 11 seconds to go, a 15 to nothing lead, and Stanford has been shut out in the first half for the first time this season. The fans enjoy the halftime festivities involving the Sharpstown High School Band of Houston. And the famous Stanford band that plays it casual with a bit of spoof style entertainment. And the spirited Georgia pep band was on hand. This gives us a chance to note during this pause from game action, the Blue Bonnet Bowl is in its 20th year as an NCAA sanctioned event operated by the nonprofit Greater Houston Bowl Association with all volunteer workers from civic leaders of Houston. All profits go to charitable causes. But now it's time to go back to play. Ken Neighbor kicks off for Stanford to start the second half and Lindsey Scott returns it 25 yards out of the end zone to start still another.